Welcome to Current Affairs at Copenhagen Suborbitals. What's happening right now in the Amateur Rocket Project, with the goal of launching a human being into space and bringing him safely back to Earth? Hosted by Thomas Peterson and Jakob Larsen. Hello everyone and welcome back to the uh, Copenhagen Suborbital Tools uh, rocket shop. Uh, we got something pretty special for you today, it's going to be pretty spectacular. It's a wide topic so we're going to cover it in stages but try and, and keeping it uh, a little slow so that, that uh, we don't mix it all up. First of all I'd like to introduce uh, Peter Mortensen, one of our uh, very special electronics people here in Copenhagen Suborbitals and he's got something very special for us today. The topic is antennas yeah. and it's a wide topic, so welcome. Thank you. Um, we're going to start out uh, in the very simple way. Antennas, we use that a lot on the rocket. Can you just give a very short overview of what we're using them Yeah. For? At the moment, on, until today, we have used uh, very simple antennas, mostly monopoles. Uh, you have seen them in these uh, small, uh, what do you call them? Yeah, it's an antenna, antenna horn. Antenna horn, yeah. Uh, and it's actually just a, a piece of wire going through that. So that's sort of a, like an antenna for a, for a walkie-talkie? Yeah, you can say that. Okay. It's just a quarter-wave uh, piece of wire. Okay. But, I mean, this one has a weird shape, and all our antenna <laughs> yeah. horns has this. So might be a touch on that one as well as we go. Well, it's pr primarily because of uh, we don't want any uh, ropes tangling up in it when, when, it's, uh, when the parachute comes out. It's not because of the antenna it's looked like this. Actually, we would prefer it looked quite differently from a, an antenna perspective. Okay. So, but we have like eight horns. We had eight yeah. horns on the next one. Yeah, so. that's right. We're going to have eight horns this year also, but we are going to replace one of them with another antenna. But at the moment, all our uh, normal communication, the telemetry and so on are in these kind of antennas. Okay. Can you give us a run through? Can you remember what was in those antenna horns la last yeah. year? We have, uh, we have a telemetry up and down link. We had a video transmitter. And we had no, I guess that is a couple of GPS antennas. GPS antennas, of course. So shells. GPS antennas took up two horns. Yeah, and that's a bit different. That's not just uh, a piece of wire. That's a normal patch antenna as you have in almost every kind of GPS antennas today. There are some other kinds, but but mostly it's patch antennas. And then the telemetry took up another two horns, I believe. Yes, we have both up up and down link, and they require two both of them. Okay, and then reach. what about the video link? It, it only had one last year, and, and that also uh, presented a problem because we don't know how the rocket is going to rotate, which means we, uh, we haven't got an omnidirectional view. So, actually, I can show it here in this illustration. Mm -hmm. uh, if you think the, the, the C axis here is the rocket, mm -hmm. uh, then this is an illustration of how a monopole in these horns is uh, radiating from the rocket. So if I'm getting this correct, it would mean that we have the rocket in this plane. Correct. And then the antenna horn would be looking outwards. Uh, actually like this. Yeah, okay. It, it would follow the, the Y plane here. Okay. So we have a, 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 a zero here where it's uh, nulled out, uh, where it doesn't radiate so in the length of the wire. Yeah, so it doesn't radiate anything in the, in the, in, in the length of the wire. Yeah. Probably a little, but, but in, in theory, yeah. But as we can see, uh, in, uh, in, in around the antenna and in down angle, it's actually quite okay, but not on the other side of the rocket. No, but of, of the rocket would simply be a, a big wall, a shadow. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we couldn't transmit around the rocket. That Precisely. would be impossible. You can see here, a little bit will get through, but, but it's significantly less. Well, it's not something we can trust, at least. No. In, so, in practice, it, it's been okay for our, our telemetry because we have doubled up and have uh, one on each side. So most of the time it's good enough and we have so much uh, margin on our UHF uh, uplinks. Uh, so yeah, that's not a, really been a problem. I heard a little rumor that the, uh, that the telemetry system is already rated for around 100 kilometers. That, that's altitude. right. Uh, everything we have uh, designed so far will, will be able to do that. But when we get to the big rockets, we are going to look at some different kind of antennas. Okay. Well, this sort of covers a little bit like what we had last year and yeah, what the yeah. conventional technology is. So I'd like just to slowly move forward a bit because we will still have a lot of horn antennas on this will, year, yeah. but there will be one minor difference. Yeah. This was the video antenna from last year, and 
that one presented a problem because we need it to radiate all around. Actually, it would be optimum if you could get it to uh, radiate light a, a sphere, perfect in every direction. Of course, we can't do that, but we can try to, uh, to get close. Okay. Well, the, if we look at the conventional technology, like the horn antenna, yeah. you brought a little, another little uh, illustration of what you could do if you had just horn antennas. Yeah. Well, you can uh, have more than one around and face them together. Uh, and then you could get a more omnidirectional pattern. Um, but it presents some problems. Uh, if the rocket is going to, to fly uh, horizontally, God forbid. Yeah, and rotate at the same time. You can see we would have a lot of zeros here where it, it would go up and down in the signal level. So okay, let, me, let me try and see if I get this one right. You have this the rocket one, in, in the C-axis here. Yeah, and then we have, instead of one horn antenna on each have side, six in this we have example. six all around. Okay. Yeah. But since they radiate not outwards in the direction they're pointing, mm -hmm. but in a lobe around them. As we saw before here, so in the, this circle. Yes. Yeah. So the combination of this large lobe we have here, yes. when slotted with six different antennas, means that the lobes are still going up and down. Correct. I mean, that's the strong red color it we actually, have here. It actually goes quite well up and down, uh, but in the direction out from the rocket, it's quite bad. You can see there's a lot of, of small holes here. Yeah, dark spots and so on yeah. we would experience. So this antenna is not, or at least six horn antennas aren't that well suited for application. Not for this application. Then. If the rocket always flies straight up, no problem because we can be right beneath it and, and receive it down here. So mm. no problem, but we can't be sure of that. And in time, we also like to try to uh, receive this signal from land, and then we need it to be uh, in, in 90 degrees uh, angle to the rocket. Okay. So this is where some of one of our little new innovations come yeah. into the picture. So Well, if we just start with some basic concept, we also looked at uh, a standard patch antenna. You have to simply tell us what a patch yeah. antenna is. Patch antenna is basically a square of conductive, in this case copper tape. So it's very thin. Very thin. It doesn't really matter that much. Mm -hmm. And a ground plane. Normally uh, you can elevate it by air or flamingo usually, because you can't do it by air of course. In this case I've used some plastic. Uh, and then you have an antenna that radiates like this. Mm, and that would see that would be the one facing like this, uh, like this. Okay, fair enough. So, that way, yeah. so let, let's just take a step back here because this is a sandwich construction. As far yes, as that's I can right. See. Uh, the back plane is always very important because it really guides the direction of the air radiated it's energy. It's like a reflector. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we have this thin part, which is the antenna and the element on the front, and then Correct. just the back plane that yeah. really guides it. And then we have this sandwich structure in between. You mentioned it could be air, and in this case, I think we it's used polyethylene. But but air would be more optimal if you wanted a, a narrow beam like this. So if we want this one to very much transit uh, transmit in exactly that direction, then air would be a better material. Okay, but it also also have a downside. It would be a, a, a little bit bigger. Mm. Okay, so these patch antennas have this very obvious uh, advantage that they're flat. Yeah, that would be nice so we don't have these sticking out of the rocket. Oh, it makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay, so are there any uh, downsides to them really? Well, yeah. If you can see here, uh, in the direction of the rocket, we don't really have much uh, radiating out right here and that also go in the downwards direction. So where the horn antenna was excellent at really radiating forwards and backwards, this one is just radiating radially outwards primarily. Primarily, yeah. Okay. So the, the, the trick is to try and get this not to be as pointy as this one, but more flat. And, and actually this one is because we have used this plastic material. Uh, it decreases the gain uh, significantly. Okay. Um, there was one simple topic I wanted to, uh, to touch on with this. We are not installing patch antennas for replacement of every single horn antenna. No. What exactly are we using this for this year? On this the one next we're not using on it, but uh, we, we have tried to make an array of them uh, because we would like it to be all the way around. If you go out on the internet and look what other has done before us, it, uh, you can make an antenna called a wrap-around antenna. 
and it's actually a band like this that goes all the right around the rocket. Okay, so if you take this one and you could sort of you could imagine the concept. Yes. Okay, but this one is only going for the video link, as far as I recall? This time, yes. Okay. It's, it's a proof of concept, so we can see it works. Yeah, and then we are, again, as, as we mentioned with Alex, there are three cameras on board this year, so yes, exactly. it's pretty important to get all that video down We once. hope so. Yeah, we would okay. really like to see the parachute deploy this year. Okay, so, all right, I'm just going to remove these, and then yes. we're actually going to take a look at the concept of what we're actually going to do this year. Yeah. So let's have it. Now you gotta tell us what this is. Yeah. Well, first of all, it's a prototype. Well, first of all, this is a parachute bucket. Yes, or that's right. A, an old model of the parachute yeah, bucket. Yeah, from, from Nexu One that was uh, discarded. Mm. So, so a wraparound antenna. Now it makes sense. Yeah. But there are some steps to it. Mm -hmm. First of all, normally this would go all the way around. You can see there are some uh, slots in it. I get back to that in a little while. You can also see there's uh, multiple points of uh, attack here. Of course, when we slotted it, we needed to apply uh, the, the, the RF more than one but, place. But each of these here, each yeah. of these elements make out one antenna. Yeah. So in this case, we have four antennas, individual antennas, wrapped around the uh, compartment. You can say that, yeah. Okay. That, that's, they are also coupled. It, it, you, you should see it as a whole. Yeah, they, that's why it's called an array. They will yeah. more or less act together and and help us with... Exactly. If, you, if you're looking at it right in here where you have the slot, you get radiation from both and it still adds up. So we're really what we're really trying to do here is, is get rid of the stuff that we can snare up uh, parachute lines, etc. and replace exactly. it with something very aerodynamic, of sleek and flat. Of course, this wire won't be here. It will be integrated just from, from measuring. Right. It's still just a knock-up. So. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so these, uh, these patch antenna elements are going to help us do uh, as, as a really good video coverage this year. We hope so. Uh, perhaps I'll just tell you what it consists of shortly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, this is the plastic material we also saw in the small patch before. Mm -hmm. It's a polyethylene, and um, on top of that we have a very thin uh, PCB, printed circuit board, like you use in electronics. It's a 0.1 millimeter. And, and so it's a flexible type. Yeah, you, actually one of the pieces you had before, mm -hmm. you can show it. Well, it's just as bendable as, as the rest of the material. It's really like is. paper. Yeah. So it's just the copper, actually, you, you can feel bending. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it's like a normal uh, printed circuit board. And to keep it together, we found some uh, special uh, self-adhesive tape from uh, 3M that uh, could a a attach both on uh, the aluminium and the polyethylene. Mm. Well, this is sort of a, a, I'd like to call it antenna art, because... Um, this is not your everyday kind of antenna. This is nope. just not something you just pull out of your uh, bottom drawer. Or something. Well, actually, uh, the, the idea of making a patch antenna array where you use multi multiple patches is everyday. The, the thing that's different here is that we wrapped it around a, a cylinder. Yeah, and we also had a little help here. The, we had we had some a little help on the 3D electro electromagnetic simulations from a company called Guided Wave Technology. So it's just like the very nice uh, yeah, the illustrations we had here. Um, yeah, okay, so l I think you also brought a little something to illustrate exactly what yeah. this is going to do for us. That's so I'm right. just going to put it down here again. Yep. Out of sight. So now we've got an antenna that's wrapped around the rocket, yeah. and they are helping each other, all these elements, and we're trying to get a uniform radiation pattern. Yeah. If the first I would like to show you is this one. It's uh, actually, you, you need to uh, think as it's, the rocket is from top, seen from the top, it's going downwards this way. Mm -hmm. And if it was perfect, it would be a perfect circle. Mm -hmm. But of course, we can't do a perfect antenna. But we can see uh, the deviation is not that great. Uh, the loss from it is, is actually quite uh, low. It's only uh, within a couple of uh, decibels, and that's not a problem for us. So could you point... Where would they be located? Diagonally here and diagonally here, the antennas? Yeah. The four different patches? Yeah, that's right. The, the slots are here where, uh, where, where the, the, the downsides are. So this would be our weakest point, really? And yeah, it's really. not it's not much below our maximum. Well, radiation. actually, that, that's only when you see the rocket uh, on, uh, on 90 degrees, this plot. 
Okay, body. so and you brought something on the yeah. This is from the, yeah. If we have the rocket in the in the okay, vertical. so now we're looking at it at the rocket from the side. Exactly. So we're staring the patch antennas right in the face. Precisely. So this you you have to imagine this is go all the way around, and we have some uh, ripple around. Uh, so these two plots are the most uh, worst case. Okay. But as you can see, if we look downwards angle from the rocket, that means not where we are, at 10 degrees, 8 degrees maybe, we actually still have significantly uh, good game. So what this little plot shows us is that this spike that comes very close to the center here and the other one that comes really close to the center here is the two directions where we don't really transmit a lot of power. So yeah. that would be right up the engine. Yes. That's not very interesting. No. And the other one's right Straight up in the, the sky. Yeah. Right into the nose cone. So, so when we have <coughs> a Vostok uh, a kilometer from, uh, from, from the launch, it would be out here somewhere and looking up towards the, the rocket. So if we're going uh, beyond 100 kilometers, we yes. would be situated in an angle where we could look at some of these that comes closest 100 to 100 kilometers, we would get quite close. Ah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, but then we would need a, a ground station from tracking it from the side. But the advantage is here that the, the performance uh, from the side is still quite good. So we don't have those holes, the blind spots that the uh, horn antennas have when looking straight Not so at them. significantly. Uh, there are holes. Uh, I think I have a plot of it. You can, the, the red uh, here, when it, where it goes in, you would have small holes. We have it here. Where you, before you saw on uh, this one, we, we had some nasty holes around. Yeah, that's the horn and that antenna. One, that's and the horn, yeah. yeah. And now we only have small holes and only on the 90 degree axis. When you look downward the uh, towards uh, Vostok, for example, it's actually quite good. So our main purpose here, if we want the perfect antenna, we want to get as close to an apple as possible. A uh, perfect uh, sphere, eh? mm. yeah. So this is a pretty good estimation of a perfect sphere. We hope it yeah. will be. Yeah. Okay, so this is going to be really, really interesting to see some video from, from this where antenna network exactly. this year. It should be able to radiate nice pictures regardless of how the rocket is really yeah. oriented. Even if it's not as pretty as this, it, sh it should have no problem you, because we are only going up about what, 10, 15 kilometers this year and our link budget is, is, is calculated for 100 kilometers. So we should have su sufficient uh, link margin this year. Okay, I think I'll hold the electronics group to the <laughs> for that. <laughs> we hope so. All right. This has been a very, very useful insight into this little uh, exotic world of antennas, and it's really nice to see that, that uh, I mean, this is an experiment, but it's yes, an exotic it one, so it's going to be really interesting to see what the results are. At the moment, we are testing uh, the resonant frequencies, and we are a little off, but we can, sure, we, we can get that straight. A little tuning, and we should Yeah, that's okay. no problem. A little copper tape, and, and that's, that's <laughs> in the yeah. box. And, right. uh, and we're going to do some, some, some simple uh, test where we're going to tilt it uh, to see if this down looping angle is, is okay. We d unfortunately, we don't have the, the, the necessary facility to, uh, to make a, a plot like this from, from real measurement. But mm. uh, it, it's, it should be fairly close. Okay. I'm very much looking forward to see the results. Yeah, at least. it's going to be very exciting. Yeah. All right, thank you very much for the insight. It's no been uh, quite informative. Thank you. Three, two, one. Questions and answers on current affairs. Submit your questions for Copenhagen Suborbitals via email to ask at carpsop.com. When you finally succeed in sending a person to space, how do you intend to bring him or her back through the atmosphere and back to Earth? Do you plan to include a heat shield on one of the capsule surfaces, and how will you control this? So, this is one of uh, our old capsules. This is the Tugel Bar capsule from 2011. And as you can see, it has a heat protective uh, layer here on the sides. And we use cork, uh, in this case, as sort of a, a demonstrating uh, ablative material. The idea is, for our speaker capsule, that when it has reached Apogee at 100 kilometers in altitude, it weighs 300 kilos, so we have a potential energy of 300 megajoule that we need to dissipate on the way down. And uh, for that we have chosen cork as an ablative material, and in the case of our speaker capsule, 
it will have the uh, cork on the bottom side because it's falling as uh, sort of falling butt first down in uh, through the atmosphere. You can see on our old demonstrator capsule we had uh, cork on the uh, circumference, but on our speaker capsule we'll have it on the uh, rounded bottom of the capsule. So the short answer to the question is that we'll uh, use a plate of cork as a heat shield on the bottom of the capsule. For further information about Copenhagen Suborbitals and our mission, please go to our YouTube channel as well as our homepage www.corpsart.com. As we're funded entirely by sponsors and donors, we need the support of our many fans to reach our goal of manned amateur spaceflight. You can support us by contributing through the support page. <laughs>